hoodie show try here. You can call me shells and I'll back, back, back out again with a brand new video. And I'm gonna keep it a bow, berry biscuit. I might have been wrong. Okay? I'm gonna say it one more time because you don't hear this very often because it's not true very often, but I might have been wrong, maybe. Just maybe. The Carolina Panthers should select a quarterback in the 2021 NFL draft. What I saw on the field last night in the national championship game between the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Nothing short of astounding. I'm not going to lie to you. What I saw from Mac Jones was very impressive. I had my questions, my doubts. I had my fears about Mac Jones this whole season because we understand what the stigma is around Alabama quarterbacks. We understand just how hard it is to actually evaluate Alabama players as a whole because the whole team is godlike, right? Every year, Alabama's team is godlike. So it's kind of hard to tell whether a guy is singularly a great player or if somehow, some way, other great players around him make his job easier and he's able to rack up stats by association. We see that all the time, not just with Bama players, but it happens a lot with Bama players and it happens a lot with Alabama quarterbacks. They always have the best running backs. They always have pretty damn good receivers and the O-line is always NFL ready. One thing about these Bama O-linemen is they are always NFL ready. So I have my questions about Matt Jones, but watching last night's game against Ohio State had me like, damn, I might gotta be on this Matt Jones train. I saw him go through progressions. He wasn't just going through one half of the field of his reads. He was going from the right side all the way to the left. He was sitting in the pocket, taking hits. He was reading the field professionally. Matt Jones was extremely, extremely impressive. He looked athletic. I saw him roll out. I saw him making passes on the run. I saw him keep his eyes downfield. I saw this man do things that made me remember a guy who used to be here in Carolina. Now, it wasn't to the same degree. Matt Jones is not that guy at all. But behind a lot of scrimmage, I saw a lot of things out of Matt Jones. He looked like a very smart quarterback who knew what to do when there were pieces around him. Can we just peek this man's stats? 45 total passes, 36 completions. He only missed on nine total passes, 464 yards, five touchdowns. Now, he did lose a fumble, had the ball held out there. It was a really bad, ugly fumble you really do hate to see. It didn't hurt them all that bad because, you know, it was 24-52. They won by a billion. But still, almost 500 yards and only missed on nine total passes. And the dude threw 45 of them. That is very, very impressive. But let's keep it real. It is very, very easy to know what to do when you have a guy named Devontae Smith on your squad. What do you have to do when there's a guy named Devontae Smith on your squad? You feed him. The man had 12 receptions for 215 yards. I'm not going to lie to you. Ohio State was playing some very, very strange almost sabotage kind of defense where they were trying to point shave or, or, or throw the game was the fix in. I have no idea what the defensive mindset was, what the strategy was for Ohio State, but whatever it was, it did not work. I have no idea what those dudes were doing against Devontae Smith, but I know what Devontae, I know what he was doing against them. He was eating. And so was throwing them passes to him. Matt Jones looked very, very impressive. And not just to Devontae Smith, to Mechie, to Najee Harris. Najee Harris was really good. Only like 79, 80 yards on the ground, but he matched that through the air as well. Matt Jones might be the kind of quarterback this team needs because we do have weapons. Look around. You have CMC. You got DJ Moore. You got Robbie Anderson for another year. That's going to be good for us. And I do want Matt Jones to have an opportunity to have a full year in the NFL without ever touching a single blade of grass. Mac Jones should be a backup quarterback for the first year. Even if he is NFL ready right now, our team is not Mac Jones ready. We need at least one more season after this offseason and the next offseason full of, uh, you know, free agency and the draft. Build up the O-line. Maybe go after another receiver or another threat. In the, on the offense between these next two years. So when Matt Jones is ready, 
He has a full complement of weapons and actual protection in front of him. The defense is going to get better regardless. We have a lot of hot shots. We have a lot of guys who are ready to go. Maybe one, one and a half more years of experience, and they will be one of the top 10 defenses in the entire National Football League. We have stars in the making on defense. If we get Mac Jones, put together an offensive line over the next two off seasons, and we keep our weapons in place, and maybe get one more receiver, because look, I ain't going to lie to you, Curtis Samuel is gone. As one Bama player comes in, an Ohio State player has to go. And that's not because I don't like Curtis Samuel. That's because the team probably just can't afford him. If we want to keep Taylor Moten, there's going to be a bidding war over Curtis Samuel. I believe this Panthers franchise will do the right thing and at least seriously consider Matt Jones at number eight. I don't think his performance in this game is going to catapult him up to like five or six status. There's too many good receivers. There's Sewell. There's the other two quarterbacks. There's a couple of DBs other teams might want. He will most definitely still be on the board at number eight. Maybe this team might be able to pick him up there. We find a way to build up the team over the next year. Let him rest and sit down and learn the NFL game. Learn the system in all of 2021. And we might be able to get a receiver, O-line, watch our defense flourish. And then we have Matt Jones, a quarterback who I think might be ready right now, but should go ahead and sit. We could probably do something. We could maybe do something, and Matt Jones could be the best option of the guys available at number eight. I'm going to do a whole video on the other quarterbacks. Zach Wilson, I'll say right now, I don't like him because the shoulder injury, BYU didn't play anybody. And when they did play somebody, he didn't look all that great, okay? I think Matt Jones could be a decent option. He could be a decent option for this ailing Carolina Panthers football team who is in dire need of a franchise quarterback. And Matt Jones could be a decent pickup there at number eight. You might even be able to trade down. If you do it right, you might be able to trade down and still be able to get Matt Jones. I don't know where he's going to land, but you could go down two, maybe three or four picks and still get Matt Jones and have more picks in your back pocket to help build up this team, specifically on the O-line and maybe get one more receiver because, look, I have a very, very strong suspicion that if Matt Jones comes to the Panthers, he will not have to change his jersey number. That's how I feel about it. What are your thoughts on Matt Jones? The Panthers getting a quarterback, trading down for Mac Jones. Would that work? Do you think he's going to go up and ahead of number eight based off his performance in this national championship game? Or, or do you think that Mac Jones is not worth the pick? Do you want someone else? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And you already know what to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.